In just a few weeks, thousands of students will return to San Diego State after more than a year of online learning. That also means fraternities and sororities will be back to normal. But an investigation by News 8 shows that normal might not be the safest option. Newly uncovered public records reveal years of misconduct among SDSU's frats. This comes as the 2019 death of freshman fraternity pledge Dylan Hernandez is at the center of a legal battle. His family says hazing and negligence by the school contributed to his death. News 8's Jack Mulmud has details. 911, what's the location of your emergency? Hi, I'm at San Diego State University. Where? The kid who's at the mouth. Is he breathing? I'm going to get us transferred over to medics. Let me talk and give them the address, and then you can tell what's going on. Stay on the line. Don't hang up. A desperate 911 call made by a San Diego State student hoping to save the life of another student, 19-year-old Dylan Hernandez. Dylan's death shocked the San Diego community and prompted SDSU administrators to vow they would finally change the Greek system, a system of fraternities with a long and sordid history of problems. Documents obtained by News 8 show years worth of misconduct among SDSU's fraternities. The details include allegations of hazing, hospital visits, drug abuse, and sexual violence. But as students get ready to return to campus, questions remain. Has SDSU done enough? It's similar in any school that's proud of its uh, party school reputation. And that's something that, uh, that San Diego State administrators have said for years that they want to get rid of. Documents obtained by News 8 show the past of 13 SDSU fraternities, with more than 200 dates, including allegations of sexual assaults, fights, parties, or investigation updates by the school, going back years. The documents also include reports of hazing and fraternity brothers drugging guests. In fall 2019, a Theta Chi pledge told the school he was hazed so hard he lost 23 pounds, was forced to throw up, drink alcohol, and hold cat food in his mouth. Quote, I've never felt so bullied in my life. Theta Chi was later booted from campus. Other pledges that year said they were dropped off at Cowles Mountain without their phones and forced to run back to the school. In August of 2018, guests said they were drugged at a Pi Kappa Alpha party. The documents go on to allege sexual assaults related to two different fraternities. The statistics are shocking, but how do these traumatic experiences affect the families? The loss of a child is definitely the ultimate tragedy for a parent. Dr. Diana Gonzalez is a trauma therapist who works with parents who lost children, but also students at San Diego State who were hazed. I think it's one of those like touchy subjects because they're not supposed to speak about it. The way it goes, it comes, um, it comes up is through their symptoms that they're experiencing. Oftentimes, is anxiety and depression and lack of self-esteem. Back at the school, university president Adela De La Torre launched two task forces the week after Dylan's death to address student safety, including hazing. The task forces, made primarily of administrators and staff, made 42 recommendations last year. So far, SDSU has fully adopted 16. They say the pandemic and lack of students on campus held them back from implementing more. I would say that that's hampered us being able to put all of these fully into implementation, but I also suggest to hear that some of those things are in the midst of implementation, we just haven't put them on the website. The attorney for Dylan's family issued a statement to News 8 saying in part, if students and their families had known the information that SDSU administrators kept secret, no one would have joined SDSU's recognized student organizations, the Hernandez family does not want history to keep repeating itself. Fraternity misconduct experts say SDSU's task forces and their system for holding frats accountable is not strong. Other advocates are calling for a stricter approach. The university leadership has to have a different attitude, and the parents who don't want to lose kids to hazing need to bring pressure on the administration to take a zero-tolerance policy and actually implement it. For now, the focus remains on SDSU and what they will do in the fall when thousands of students return from the pandemic. I think we're prepared. At the same time, I don't want to discount or diminish the fact that, yes, we've been in the middle of a pandemic. We have even more documents that go into fraternity misconduct at SDSU. All you have to do is go to our website at cbs8.com and click on this story, and you will see 13 timelines for each fraternity's misconduct. We also uploaded a spreadsheet full of all the things SDSU says that it will do this year to curb hazing. Meanwhile, the school says it will not comment on the pending Dylan Hernandez legal battle.